I've got a French cat to show you. You're probably thinking, mm, wouldn't a French be better off cooking something they're very good at? Yet yeah, here I am, Peugeot 508 Sports Wagon. So what's going to be the verdict? Come with me and we're going to find out if the French should in fact stay in the kitchen or they can build good cars. Righty, oh, launch control. So let's put you into sport mode. Traction control off. So the nanny is off. Can I fiddle with anything else? I think that's it. All right, foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. Let's warm you up a bit. Let's rock and roll. Come on, Frenchy, show me what you've got. Oh, anti slip regulation activated. So to declare zero to 100 is eight seconds, and I am. 7.6, hi, not bad, not bad at all. The top speed is 240 kilometers an hour. For so long, I've been trying to get you. So the driving setup might take some time to get used to. We've got a low set steering wheel, high display, and you might ask yourself a question, why did the French do it? Well, because they can. I mean, were they supposed to follow the Germans? Let's not get into history because that discussion might take a long time. But actually, if you think about it, it is all about your mindset. As soon as you hop in this car, you start driving it and you stop thinking about the different setup, it actually feels very natural, easy, and you see everything. So nothing to complain about. And speaking of visibility, you've got no blind spot in the front, reasonably big rear window, so all sorted. And for goodness sake, this car feels like a French sofa. It is so comfy. You do not feel any bumps, potholes, imperfections. I mean, the suspension here is absolutely brilliant. It is such a beautiful long distance cruiser. The ride is peachy, it is serene, quiet, but it especially is relaxing when you trot around town on electric only. I just wanna love you a little to see where this is going now. So this is a plug-in hybrid and under the bonnet I've got a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine combined with electric motor and the total power that's being produced is 225 horses. The good thing here is that you can easily switch between electricity and combustion engine to prioritize efficiency of a performance if you choose to do so. You can hold electricity for when you need it and that is usually city driving. Having said that, you can drive up to 135 kilometers on electric only. Naturally, when you're flying on the motorway, your electric range goes right out of the window. But if you're driving in city, you will have about 50 kilometers, which is about 30 miles of electricity. And to charge the battery, one hour, 45 minutes using a wall box, 7.4 kilowatt hours and jobs are robbing. But even if you don't charge your battery, the fuel economy remains at, well, bugger all, seven to eight liters. Think that we need a guiding light. Right now we're so the back seat, but before I do, you have frameless windows, not just in the front, but also in the back. Very stylish, very sleek. All right, so I have adjusted both front seats for my height, which is just over 1.7 meters, five foot seven. I've got pretty good leg room, very good headroom. We've got a panoramic sunroof. Unfortunately, the back passengers can't enjoy this feature because it doesn't reach you, but anyway, we do have lovely Alcantara here at the back. What about the middle seat? It is actually all right. You can easily fit your feet here. You have a small hump here on the floor, but it doesn't seem to be too bothersome. Two USB-C ports. The middle seat is not a long distance solution for an adult, but it certainly is good enough for a child. Time to check just how generous the boot space really is. Electronic operator tailgate worked every single time. Right up till now, that is. Ah, manual labor, that is fine. We have 530 liters of space. The shape of the boot is very practical. The floor nearly flat. You do have this metal panel protecting the car, 
but it's still very easy to slide items out and put them back in. If this is not enough, you can of course fold the back seats down and you will have a whopping 1,780 litres of space. What I do like, you've got storage for your cables. You know, sometimes the cables are just flying around. It's not very elegant. Here, they're neatly stored under the floor. Very organised, almost Germanic. I like it. And that is enough about the boot space. Isn't the cabin gorgeous? The design is absolutely lovely. The quality of the materials, the fit and finish is excellent. I love these seats. You've got many Alcantara, they're very soft and comfy. You also have seat massage to activate it. Just press the button down here. We've got five options. I'm gonna put cat paw. People's comments were, WTF Anna, what is a cat paw? Well, no WTF, a cat paw is a cat stroking you, just a little bit at a firmer pace, you see. It's, it's beautiful, I like it. So the steering wheel, initially you might think, well, something is missing. Why is it so small? Well, because the French have designed it, they can do whatever they want. It's just a little bit small, but works like a normal steering wheel. It feels good in your hands, I really like it actually, good quality. Shortcut buttons here clean and simple layout I like it you also have paddle shifters although would you actually bother changing gears in a car like this okay when you go to the mountains fair enough it does become rather handy so yesterday I have taken this lovely vehicle on a long distance journey I thought what a gorgeous long distance cruiser but what a disaster the French have not put on cruise control I mean are you mad no, they're not mad, I'm just a little bit stupid because today I turned the steering wheel. Oops, here's the cruise control. It's hiding down here. Well, you have to turn the steering wheel to see it, but with time, you just feel it, you use it. You, it just becomes a part of the car, but it's there. Oh, yep, it's definitely there. But the digital drivers display are sitting a little bit higher. You see, it's funny because it's at first it appears to be very bizarre. Steering wheel down here. It's just a question of getting used to it. Lovely, smaller uh, digital drivers display. You can change the look of it as well. Very nice, actually. I really like it. All right, let's have a look at that one. I've got two dials. Lovely. All right, let's hop into practicality. Large bottle of water test. You can easily fit that in a door bin. You also have a small carpet, so neither glass nor metal bottles don't end up banging on the sides, which can be a little bit irritating. You can pop that bottle in here as well. A large pocket down here. Plenty of practicality, actually. You've got a pocket down here. 12 volt socket. All right, very practical, let's close that. You do not have um, wireless mobile charging in this specification of a vehicle, but you do have a small shelf down here. You don't see a mobile phone when you're driving. <laughs> Truth be told, that's, that is supposed to be the case, right? You shouldn't be looking at your mobile phone. You've got two USB-C ports, that's that. Glove box, let's have a look at you. Very big size. Okay, I do like vocal speakers. I do like this, you know, slightly different colors, different fabrics. I like it, different materials. Absolutely lovely. All right, so let's move on to the beauty of this infotainment system. <laughs> well, so the screen is really nice. It's a touch screen, okay. Already getting confused. Come on, come on, Anna. <laughs> so, is it very innovative and very intuitive? Probably not. No, 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 no. But, all right, with a bit of time you can get your head around it so you can use your fingers. But you also have those shortcut buttons, which, you know, you first look at it, oh, it's a bit of a mumbo jumbo, but it's, it's good. God, this massage is really good. It's very relaxing. Let's have a look at navigation. So the graphics, they're pretty good. I mean, they're not the most crisp and sharp graphics I've ever seen in my life in a car, but they're pretty good of course you can plug in your iphone on your android so you've got shortcut buttons for your mobile phone charging information oops my fuel economy has increased to 10 liters with launch control oh well too bad climate control sure. so you know the system at first it might be to be a bit of a mumbo jumbo but it doesn't take long to figure out because it's actually quite um 
quite simple and quite short is the word can I say it? can I use this word short there's not much in it it's not so complex like the MBUX where you have so many options that your head starts to hurt sometimes if you are in a rush but you know, yeah keep it simple I suppose but climate control down here these are the touch buttons so seat heating lovely recirculation of your air lovely simple drive modes I like it actually the cabin I think is a very strong selling feature of this car this is a front-wheel drive car so very chilled and relaxing to drive the steering is nice and light but it's got a very good response despite its smaller than usual size now this car has got a good turning circle easy to maneuver in and out of car parks perhaps what's not great when you do maneuver this car around car parks is the eight-speed automatic gearbox which at lower speeds can get a little bit choky it can get a little bit jerky and it does get on your nerves from time to time but other than that it's a very smooth operator now the soft suspension here you may think well how that's gonna go in a twisty row but actually surprisingly the softer suspension has put no stain on handling whatsoever. We've got a solid grip on a twisty road, overall a very good balance. And I have to say, the French have really got this one right. I mean, sure, it's no sports car, but let me tell you, on a twisty road, it won't fall apart and cry. I'm going to see just how punchy this car is so let's put you into sport mode by the way this is the conveniently located button to switch between electric and combustion engine very clever very smart and let's floor it <laughs> you see how civilized this engine is an electric motor really does help this car pick up very quickly the acceleration here is more than salubrious and the handling well I'm gonna take on this corner without slowing down and I have to say, I am very, very impressed. Peugeot has done really well with this car. And how much does this French pleasure going to cost you? £39,000 in the UK. I think this is actually very well priced because you get a whole lot of car for 39 k I think the 508 is a fantastic alternative to two types of car. One, an SUV. Let's be honest, more often than not, a car like this will handle the road better than any SUV. Number two is an alternative to the Germans. You see, this car is very stylish, it is very elegant. The 508 Saloon is absolutely striking. Both models still somewhat unique. I really like it actually. You see, and the French have proven that they can do both, be very good cooks and build great cars. And isn't this a delightful combination? Am I thinking exactly? And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye.